Hi, welcome to Institute of Science Malaysia Virtual Open Day. Okay, so I, I'm going to uh, introduce you to our foundation program. Okay, I'm the head of foundations program. So um, let's take a look on our program. Okay, how it actually draws the line and brings you into the next level of study in our undergraduate programs. So our engineering foundation year program, okay, the duration is one year, okay, exactly around that period of one year. So number of semester, we have three semester, okay, zero semester, one semester one and semester two. Okay, intakes, we have three intakes, April, July, and September. So you can pick your choice and wait, but which point you have to enter our program. So after you complete our engineering foundation program, so uh, you will have to move on to the next level undergraduate programs. So your academic progression, you have two choice. Okay, one is two plus two is a transfer program. Uh, you actually can choose to study four years at our UK campus. Okay, it's not a problem. It depends on your decisions. Now, let us say, okay, our course, okay, is one year durations. Okay, um, you have two choice. Either you choose a two plus two transfer program or you choose to study four years in our UK campus. So if you go for two plus two, so you have three choices here, okay, to, uh, to pro pro progress to the next level. That is aeronautics and astronautics, electrical and electronics engineering, and also mechanical engineering. So this is uh, the three options that you have when you move on um, after you finish our engineering foundation program and you continue to study in our Malaysia campus. And of course, uh, don't, don't think that you are actually at this advantage because you can actually uh, tailor and uh, customize your, your, your specializations in your third year and fourth year. So there's no problem yet. You're definitely not at this advantage. And also, of course, like once you meet our entry, uh, uh, meet our progression uh, requirements, you actually can you know proceed in four years in our UK campus, it's not a problem. And of course, uh, if let's say you choose to continue four years in our UK campus straight away after finish our engineering foundation program, so you will have these choices, okay, 17 of them, these degree programs at our UK campus. Okay, just bear in mind that uh, 17 of them, okay, five of them out of 17 are uh, sciences, for example, we have computer science, and geophysics, mathematics, physics, and ship science. Okay, so the rest are engineering program. Okay, so uh, one of the greatest highlight is uh, on our program is okay. Uh, we have automatic progressions. Okay, of course, we have semester zero, semester one, and semester two. Okay, so our final exam is actually happening at two point one. There's one written exam here after you finish the semester one, and the rest of the four formal written exam is at the end of the semester two. Okay, of course, we will have some coursework throughout the progressions of this semester, okay, as one of our assessment. However, okay, let's say we come back to talk about uh, semester zero. Okay, semester zero, okay, we will have some informal assessment. Okay, the assessment itself uh, is not really counted, however, Okay, it's good for lecturers to, to actually monitor your progress. And I personally like this kind of setting because that you no know, one one students from SPM or O level, okay, they came in. Okay, what happens is they are kind of like need to adapt to the environment. So in semester zero, instead of pumping in, flooding them with all these kind of informations and all these engineering focused uh, slippers, we are trying to bridge them into into a more comfortable environment where when it comes to zero semester we will consider like a refresher courses okay so we do it lightly at first when we start to finish your zero semester okay we, we, we monitor your progress you go to take some informal assessment okay we monitor your progress we talk to you okay you then do these sections okay we were able to talk to you about your progression and how you perform and then once we get you into and adapt in our programs, you will start to pick up a lot of engineering focus modules in our semester, starting from our semester one and until semester two. 
Okay, you can take a look on our course content here. Starting from zero semester, you will see that, okay, all these lists, okay, academic and personal development, communicating in English, fundamental of science and engineering, mathematics for science and engineering, all these kind of like, you no know, kind of like refresher courses. Okay, the, 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 the module itself, the title, is more like a general, but I would say that this is a comfortable level of refresher courses. So when you we, we are able to bridge them in, into a more engineering focused module when it comes to semester one and two. So when you see our listed our list here, semester one and semester two, you will see that mathematics is here, intensive for engineering principles, electricity and electronics, mechanical science. These are very engineering focused. Okay, and this is one of the highlights as well. Okay, so it's actually good for those who have already decided, uh, you know, have uh, early decisions, okay, that being ambitious to become an engineer. Okay, so actually we don't want to waste our students' time. Okay, we just actually introduce them with this engineering focus module. Instead of going through like basics, okay, again, physics and chemistry, blah, 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 again, but we will try to engage them in engineering focus module. Okay, of course, uh, like I say that our assessment also include coursework and also some soft skills. Road to success is actually our soft skills. Okay, however, there's one more highlight I want to share with you. Okay, that is our computer applications. And in, term, in the terms of computer applications, I, I, sometimes I, I have some question, uh, questions come back to us uh, saying that, hey, what actually you are teaching our students in computer applications? I will, I will probably say that, okay, we are doing Python programming. It's a high level programming language, okay? So, when I say, I probably say that because that I know that, okay, I have some experience, okay, previously, you know, I, I've taught oh, some A-levels, O-levels, and multi programs, Australian matriculations, okay, all these uh, general uh, examinations, okay, board. Uh, so what happens is, I realized that, okay, in our foundation program, okay, this is the third highlight, okay, the third highlight, okay, our computer applications, okay, is really teaching our students doing programs and codings, okay. We invested 90 hours at least, okay, face-to-face, -face guiding hours, okay, teaching our students hands-on doing codings and programming. Can you imagine that, okay? I believe that my previous experiment, experience actually tells me that I did that in my previous uh, institutions. But here in this program, I probably say that I am sharing it with you, okay? We are intensively inputting our students a right knowledge for logical thinking when it comes to programming, okay? And we have very committed and dedicated teaching assistants and lecturers doing that, okay? So that is what I said, I probably share with you that we are doing uh, Python programming here, okay? And we spend at least 90 hours, okay? Face-to-face -face guided hours, okay? Hands-on with our students. Next, okay, our entry requirements, okay? Our mainstream of students actually come from SPM, O-level or equivalent. So our standard uh, entry requirement is five A's. Okay, student must be from science stream and of course, uh, the two science main subject has to be one of uh, become the two of A's, mathematics and physics. And of course, for SPM holder, for SPM holder, okay, we will need that uh, you have have a minimum B plus in additional mathematics. Of course, IB is thirty two points overall. STPM and A level, A B B, and of course, other qualification will be treated on a case by case basis. Okay, so this is our added value, okay? It's our added value in our campus, okay? Our campus is not really big at this moment, okay? That's play for, okay? We are actually, our learning space and our academic office is actually quite near, okay? So it's very easy for students to actually catch up with us, now uh, come, to, come to look for us and locate us as well. So. Uh, by the way, okay, we have a very high staff to students ratio in our campus currently, 
And of course, our students are taught by highly qualified academics. And of course, uh, what happens is what we are doing at our engineering foundation program is exactly the same of the map modules, okay? Exactly the, the, the modules in semester one and semester two is exactly the same and the quality, teaching quality is also the same, okay? There's no tolerance of quality in our foundation program. Okay, and we receive a very high level, okay, the students receive very high level support and feedback. Uh, I say that our academic offer, uh, office and is actually quite near to the student learning space. Okay, we are actually just one level away from them. <laughs> okay, so uh, students, of course, we learn through a lot of activities, okay, a combination of lectures, tutorials, laboratories, uh, experiments, and they will enjoy our physical measurements and experience as well. So, uh, coursework and group project and uh, individual projects as well. So that is some of the added values uh, in our foundation program. And of course, students are not left behind with recreation activities. So they, have, they are free to create their own clubs. If let's say these are the list, is, uh, the, the club is not there. They are free to come up with their own clubs, okay? And of course, uh, we our students are active uh, even uh, after the class. So I would say that um, they, are, they, are, they are active, okay, at this age, okay. Of course, um, they are, they are, some of the clubs is very happening, okay, especially the music clubs, okay. So this is what uh, our clubs in, in US, USM. Oh, of course, now is our tuition fee, okay. Our students, local Malaysian students, okay, uh, we charge them like 28,500, okay, for international students is 34,100. So, of course, uh, the fee can be made in three installments. Okay, no problem with that. Of course, uh, usually I will get some uh, inquiries. Okay, students are looking for uh, scholarships. Okay, these are some of the uh, scholarships we offer ranging from 10% to 100%. Okay, so uh, let's say, for example, if we have, we have a good results, at least like five A's, okay? So uh, you, your, your, your fee will be waived for 10% on our tuition fee for our foundation program. Of course, uh, if let's say you have a very good result, like eight A stars, okay? So you, your tuition fee will be 100% waived in foundation program. So of course, uh, one of the highlights as well, okay? One, another highlight that I want to point out is our Dean Progressions Scholarship over here, okay, the last row here, okay. So those who meet our progression requirements, and then, of course, this is a very happy, uh, I'm pleased to, to, to receive that news that our students are, 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 are all our, for example, all of them is 100% uh, progress into our under, undergraduate programs. Of course, they are unhappy, but I'm also happy to let them know that Okay, we have a Dean Progression Scholarship for them to actually get some extra reward. Okay, for example, if let's say the students have scored uh, average marks, okay, let's say uh, over 90%, okay, the part one, which is the next year, next year one, okay, of uh, the undergrad undergraduate programs, they will be with 100%, okay? For example, this is the, the last one that I'm talking about, okay? If the student score, okay, an average score over 90%, their part one or year one undergraduate program, the tuition fee will be with 100%, okay? I will say that this is extra reward, okay? So it's, it's actually really for them to repeat, okay? So of course our students are, let's say getting uh, 80% above, okay? So at least, they will still have a 10% of scholarship rewards, okay? So, uh, of course, uh, students are free to uh, apply an external sponsorship body. And that's the end of my presentations. But before I going to answer your questions, I want to show you something that uh, recently um, that we, 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 uh, we managed to conduct our, our online sections. Uh, and I'm showing you examples, okay, what, what, what I'm, I'm actually I'm doing. So, um, let's see. Okay. Hmm. 
So this is this is my my online uh, live interactions. Okay, you can hear what I'm doing, and you can see my notes is on there. So uh, this one is just an example. Okay. So uh, this is actually at the middle of the of the presentation and also the, at the middle of my lesson. So uh, this is happening live previously. So means that supply coming in is 100 milliampere. Like I say that this 2.5 milliampere. Okay, so my presentation has done. So I'm waiting for questions. Hi, Ivan. Yep. Yep, uh, this is Johan. Okay. Yep. So just wondering that uh, if you could share also the, you know, like the progression rate from our students, you know, um, maybe some historical progression rate, you know, is it good? And you know, how was the male-female ratio in the course? You know, there's quite a lot of um, frequently asked questions that I tend to get during those fairs. Yeah. Okay. So, so um... So we we just run a conversation until you know maybe uh, some question comes in. Yeah, of course. Uh, our progression rate is uh quite high. Okay, up until ranging from uh eighty to eighty five percent. Okay, so uh that is the current number, and of course um the ratio of the gender. Okay, uh, of course uh engineering program uh you know kind of like um, sometimes I they they will consider that uh, engineer is only for boys, but in fact, uh, that is not the issue, okay? That is not the issue. In fact, uh, girls, okay? I have seen some of my friends, postmates, okay, last time, okay? It's also, there's a lot of female, okay? So, same goes to us, or same goes to us. Although the number is a bit low compared to uh, male, definitely we have like um, around 20% of them is actually a girl. Uh, is female, so should not be a problem for for the gender. Um, we welcome students, uh, female students, uh, to join our program, and then um, it's a equality in our university. We emphasize that. So, any any uh, questions? Yeah, I, I also often get this uh, question, especially from parents. Is yep. that you know, they said uh, you know uh, when my son or daughter you know is uh, entering you know, Southampton Malaysia, mm -hmm. so uh, they would only be around seventeen to eighteen years old you know sometimes even younger at sixteen. So uh, maybe you know, they always have a two part question. One is uh, are there any safeguarding policies regards to maybe younger student? Second question is um how would you support uh, students regardless of their age when they are in the university because uh, for most of them that's the first time that they are away from home. So, you know, um, I always talk about our personal academic tutor, uh, you know, the systems. So maybe you can talk about uh, safeguarding and also the PAT system. How about that? Okay. So, um, of course, uh, our students came from a uh, variation of ages. Okay. Uh, the youngest so far I get is 15. The youngest is 15. And it came up to like 21 year old. Okay. It actually quite... Uh, I would say the ratio is quite uh, there's a there's a gap over there. Okay. However, okay, uh, we have safeguarding uh, policy to our younger students who is uh, below uh, seventeen year old. And of course, like I would say that uh, we have a very good supporting system there instead of just uh, PAD, the tutor and duty uh, support. Of course, uh, we have counselors to help us on this matter. So. It's we at the same time. Uh, we, I say that uh, our office, academic office, is very easy to approach. Okay, it's just one level away from from our, the students' learning compound. And if let's say they are staying nearby, for example, just across the road. Okay, the student village. Okay, it's just like three minutes walks away from them. Okay, so the the warden is twenty four seven. Okay, uh, uh, sitting uh, in our students. Uh, uh, located down the, downstairs, okay. So uh, it's not a problem for them to seek for uh, assistance and seek for help as well. So uh, like I say that um, our our lecture is uh, experienced. They are okay, ready to assist our students, uh, okay, in these um, academic matters. And of course, 
some of the personal matters as well. So, um, of course, any uh, students are, are, are feel free to engage any counselors, uh, services, or request from the student office. Okay, so that is uh, some of the things that uh, we can uh, provide. It. And of course, uh, those are younger, okay, we are paying attention on them, okay, and basically in one whole program, we have at least uh, three formal meetings with the duties, and of course, our uh, informal one, we have always happens uh, during the lunchtime, okay, and after the classes, okay, and sometimes uh, after after uh, the, the, the classes of each of session, we have a short discussion between the tutor activities, no problem, okay? So formal and informal, okay? We support in the classroom, we support outside the classroom, PAT, and we, even we have professional services to support them as well. So uh, I would say that uh, the students on our hands are free, are sound, safe, and sound. Okay, so that there's uh, what I can share about uh, how we manage to support. Okay, so um, I believe um, we have also some, uh, we have one female uh, staff, okay, our lecturer is female. And then for those who, the, I would say that um, the female students, of course, the number is a bit smaller compared to the male students. And then what happens is, uh, you know, sometimes um, for, for female, okay, they, they are a bit sensitive, okay, so they, they tend to talk to their, the, the female uh, the same gender, okay, especially when it comes to some, uh, some academic problem, maybe some personal problems. So our lecturers, okay, female, okay, one of female uh, lecturers, okay, they, he, she is so ready to, to, to assist on this matter. And we, we are able to support not, in, not only in terms of uh, the, the age, the range of the age, okay, not only in, in terms of professional service, I would say that even in gender, if they say, okay, you, you, uh, the, uh, the female is not ready to, to, to share or, or to, to, to talk to the uh, male lecturers or the tutor. What happens is uh, she, she has the options to, to talk to our female lecturers as well. Okay, so we we're able to su support uh, you know, all ranges of even genders and ages as well. Okay, we have a safeguard policy to, to protect our students below 17 years. Yeah, you see? Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, I also get some questions from uh, parents, especially students also sometimes is, uh, mm. what's the typical learning time per day, per week that students are expected to face? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, parents and students, they don't want to be uh, overburdened by studies or they don't want to also have uh, something too light. You know? So let us know roughly what's the learning time and also, you know, in your opinion, uh, you know, what's the balance? Uh, so after this question, you can also answer to one of our chat uh, students, okay, or one of the chat uh, room, which is how okay. to apply to study here, okay? So uh, maybe you can answer mine first yeah. on the okay. typical uh, load. Yeah. yeah, so regarding to the study time or study uh, period, okay, so generally uh, every single day, uh, the, the classes will be arranged from 9 a.m. until like 5 to 6 p.m. Okay, of course, uh, we don't want to burden our students too much. We try to mix around with the activities, learning activities that have uh, in each day. So it, we, we try to avoid that uh, for the whole uh, whole day. It's all lecturers, okay, each of the program, um, modules is like two hours extended, like four times, okay, and we try to avoid that. So we will try to make it like a mixture of activities so that it will get uh, really burdened by the same activity for the whole throughout the day. So uh, that is the thing that uh, we, we will try to uh, adjust to it and then uh, so that you will be able to adapt uh, to the learning uh, environment. Okay, so uh, of course uh, there are, it, because we are, we are in Malaysia, okay, so um, what happens is uh, on Friday, we try to have uh, no class, okay, we, we try to uh, reckon the, the classes uh, between uh, 12 to 2.30. So uh, it's actually good giving a, a, a uh, enough time, ample time for the Malaysian students, those Muslim students to, to go for prayer. So uh, we, we managed to adjust that as well. So uh, we try to avoid, uh, you know, they rush back and forth uh, from their prayer uh, place. And you know, so we, we give some uh, a space for them to, to, to conduct their, their prayers. So uh, these are the things that uh, we, we managed to 
Oke. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, firstly yeah. let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Bay. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching foundation year. And that means Mr. Ivan Lai is my immediate boss. Now, uh, there are a few questions uh, asked by previous visitors. Uh, maybe I uh, first of all state the questions and maybe if you allow me, I can answer or maybe Ivan, you would like to answer yourself. Yeah, I try to input. I try to input. So, uh, what sort of labs do students do? Wow, there's a lot of them. Okay, um, for semester one and semester two, uh, the total is around uh, 15 of them, 15 to 16, if I'm not mistaken, around that number. And of course, uh, when it comes to zero semester, you will have around six of the lab. So total, you will have, be, have some physical measurement experience that throughout the program, it will be roughly around 20 occasions, 20 sections. So if each of the session is one, uh, is three hours, so you will have around 60 hours of lab, physical lab experience. So I believe that this is huge enough, okay, for, for students to handle, okay, 60 hours, okay. So I, I believe that uh, this is also one of the highlights because we are not just emphasized on academic, okay, knowledge-wise, but at the same time, we allow students to try, like, try on hands-on, you know, do some physical measurements, complete the logbook, jot down their, their, all their measurements, drop down their, their experience, their discussions, and make valid conclusions for each of the experiments. And then students are not just, uh, you, some students, uh, actually, uh, before I actually continue, okay, I actually have uh, once, uh, uh, a question before. Students ask me that why we have three hours per section? Okay, normally we have like one and a half to two hours is enough for them. Okay, for example, my previous ex uh, experience, okay, my ex institutions, what happened is each of the lab session is just limited to one and a half hour to maximum two hours. But why here we emphasize we need to insist on each section three hours. Okay, not only like we encourage students to complete their, their lab sections following the lab sheet, but at the same time, we encourage students for deeper learning. So we allocate extra one hours to students, okay? Not just completing the logbook, okay? Doing the physical measurements, but at the same time, they are allowed for one hour. Each of the students have one hour to engage deeper learning. So they can play with the instruments, okay, try to try to adjust whatever they want, of course, in the safe practice, okay. So they can try attempt. If let's say they want to uh, attempt some alternative solutions or some alternative method to measure uh, the experiments and uh, based on the procedure, we are welcome. Of course, uh, we will supervise them on this method as well. So we, not only the one hour engage on in deeper learning, but at the same time, Lecturers, instructor, lab instructor will have opportunity to feedback immediately on the spot to their work as well. So that is a complete set. A complete set, I would say. Yeah. So from my experience, since I'm teaching one of the modules uh, on mechanical science, mm -hmm. so uh, the lab, my lab is related to the module they are taking. So yep. it's kind of a uh, applying what they learn in their class, in the lecture, bring them to the lab session. So that is, yeah, one of the highlights of the lab session. They are not so-called, uh, not related, they are, they are related to their subjects or to the modules, especially the technical modules, uh, mechanical science, electricity, electronics, and also engineering principles. Yeah. And then I also want to add on one thing. Regarding to our experiments, I, I'm actually quite proud to say that our experiments, okay, is engaged very well to what the students are learning. Okay, for example, uh, I, we, I, I teach students about Kirchhoff Law in, in, in my uh, lecture. But at the same time, I have one specific experiment 
specifically uh, just targeting the, the scoop is just very narrow up until the multi loop circuit. So it's heavily emphasized on how what students learn in the class, but at the same time, how they do an experiment on Kirchhoff law, how to prove and investigate that Kirchhoff law is valid. Okay, whatever they learn in theory, okay, the ITO case, but at the same time, they're able to prove and even find uncertainty in their circuit constructions. Okay, so how is contact makes, okay, make sure that the contact is well uh, plugged in in the breadboard. So these are the activity I would say that, okay, not the experiment, just like the students are following the, the lab sheet and just complete or because of they want to do it, but because the, the content itself is very closely engaging to our content learning. So that is where I, I would say that the students are able to relate what they learn in the class and at the same time what they are doing in the lab. So that is one of the highlights as well. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Sounds like lab session is a fun time for students. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of fun, uh, apart from those lectures, lab, the official teaching and learning, what other extracurricular activities that students have or can get involved? Uh, I believe that uh, now, okay, uh, we have a good plan in our next coming intake, okay, that we try to um, standardize, okay, I would say that we try to standardize and close the gap of differences uh, experience in one of our intakes, okay. Uh, our September intake is the shortest amount of all of these intakes. However, we don't want to, to we don't want our students to be like, kind of like, uh, have a tolerance in their learning experience. We want to make it exactly the same. They feel the same, like, even though you come in at April intake, July intake, even though you come in at, at September, we want them to have the same experiment and the quality of the learning itself. So, uh, of course, uh, what I say is difference is there's one activity is quite different compared to uh, uh, April intake and July intake. Our September intake have uh, power generations uh, through the uh, water vortex. So, now we have a planning, okay, we want to bring this forward to each of the intakes and make them going through some basic physical experience on this, okay? And from there, they will see that even though I come in at September or even though I come in at July, I will have doing the same thing. I will learn the same thing that, that is the quality maintains. That's what I want to share as well. But of course, it's reminded by you, <laughs> okay? Yeah, anything you want to add? I believe that because uh, you are the main person, uh, uh, person in charge on this uh, uh, this project, and I received very uh, high uh, uh, compliments and also a very high uh, in terms of uh, no uh, the, the 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 good reviews. Okay, I would say good reviews from 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 peers and also from students. Say uh, saying your power generations and through uh, the water vortex is very useful for them to. Uh, not just learn applying the, the pro knowledge itself, but at the same time, doing some fine tune on their designs. Can you tell me more about this? You know, how they fine tune and prototyping their designs? Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, Ivan. Uh, there are two things to share: uh, the water vortex and also the badminton activities uh, mentioned by Johan earlier. But let me, uh, yeah, share the water vortex uh, project now. This project is actually very well documented in the uh, Southampton Malaysia webpage. So if you allow me to share my screen. Welcome to the workshop for gravitational water vortex power plant. So let me explain this workshop using firstly this model as an illustration. Now, on your left here, it is a river, river stream, and uh, I built a leeway here so that some of the water will flow into this basin. And let me show you, with the help of these beads, how the water will flow when it enters this basin. So let me put slowly, one by one.
So you can see that the, the water particles will swirl, so called, inside this water basin and ultimately will flow out and back to the mainstream of the river. So the, due to this swirling uh, of the water, it is called vortex. Vortex is formed and we can tap the energy from this vortex formation so that we can generate electricity. And the purpose of this workshop is to design this object called turbine, the blade of the turbine, so that it will rotate and it will generate electricity. So moving on to the left here is a simplified model of this basin showing you the water in flow and also I already have installed a blade at the center here and you can see that the blade is rotating and you can see that it is connected to a DC motor and with the LED lighting up, blinking, showing that electricity has been generated. And to further prove this, this LED is also connected to a multimeter showing the reading in terms of voltage of the electricity generated. So the workshop uh, supposedly for visitors to design the shape of the blade. Uh, let me pull this out and show you. This is one of the uh, design you can get, you can design. It's a very simple rectangular plate. So it's things, object design as simple as a rectangular plate can also make electricity, generate electricity. And now let me show you what other visitors have done, have designed and created and also their respective reading. So firstly, this is uh, by one of the visitors and you can see this is the shape of the blade instead of a standard rectangle. It has this uh, yeah, U shape or curve shape and these are the readings. Uh, now there are three reading, readings representing the uh, whole size of this uh, turbine. And we go back actually over here, there is a hole at the bottom of this turbine, of this basin. And the size of the hole will actually determine the output of the uh, setup as well. So you can see here, when the hole is 24 millimeters, then this is the voltage obtained. When the hole is 22 millimeters, and this is the hole, and so on. So this is one of the uh, design and output from the visitor. Next, I can show you another one from another visitor. Again, the design looks like a Y shape, inverted Y shape with uh, various readings and so on. And another design. This time, it shows zero reading for this particular hole size. This is because the shape is too thin. And when it is too thin, the water may not be able to hit the uh, blade, the side way, and therefore this whole design will not rotate. So that's the reason why there's a zero reading here. And that is all for my simple workshop demonstration for this water vortex power plant. Thank you very much. Right, so thank so, you, Ivan. Uh, thank you for the brilliant talk and yeah. the wonderful Q and A. Before I end this, uh these sections, I, I will really want to encourage students who thinks that they are, you are ambitious to, to join our university and also you are ambitious because you have the right conditions to join our university as well. So uh, don't give up yourself yet, okay? If let's say you are, you are stuck in the borderline, okay? You are very close to our entry requirements. Don't give up hope yet. Okay, I would encourage to you to attempt and try to apply today. Okay, by today, please go and apply it. Okay, I will evaluate case by case basis. So of course, um, I will welcome you in advance. I will say I welcome you in advance. Okay, and thank you for your attentions who actually join uh, these sections and I'll see you soon. Okay, that's all for my sections. Bye.